Well, I think it is absolutely appropriate that he be on the Wall of Honor. Uh, he um, was the force behind the Cavs being the team they are today. Uh, I don't think all of the good things that have happened to the Cavs, including a NBA championship, uh, would have happened had we uh, not uh, uh, built this building downtown and had Gordon not brought the team uh, from Richfield to downtown. He played a, uh, an amazingly important role in the uh, fact that these buildings are architecturally iconic for uh, downtown. Gordon Gunn saved this team. You know, because of Mr. Gunn, the team is still here. The team is in downtown Cleveland now because of Mr. Gund, and he did things the right way. You know, he came in and demanded that one of the conditions was that they were able to buy uh, first round draft choices. In the 1986 NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Brad Darty. You know, the, the first time I met Gordon Gunn, he stuck his hand out and he said, Brad Darty. Welcome to the Cavaliers. We're so excited to have you. And I, 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 it, it kind of caught me off guard because I thought I was going to have to go up and embrace and engage. And he lit right into my basketball at North Carolina, playing for Dean Smith and all those types of things. And just, he just said a lot of wonderful things about the journey we were going to go on together. And, and right away I knew I was talking to someone that, that had a great grasp of everything going on around him. Uh, it was very cerebral, and so I was excited. I knew this was going to be an interesting opportunity to play basketball for he and his brother, uh, George, and uh, so I was excited. You know, we shot out like a cannon, you know, uh, for a, a turnaround that might have taken, you know, several years. We were able to get that thing righted in a couple seasons with, with that group that they drafted, and uh, just through Gordon's leadership, you know, in that process was, uh, you know, really why we were able to do that. Price, Price back to Williams down to the right corner to Elo. On the right wing, Price for three, got it! He literally would, would sit out in the crowd during the games and he'd have headphones on, you know, listening to, uh, to, to Joe Tate call the, call the games on the radio. And, and I remember him being interviewed one time and, and somebody was asking him just through his senses and listening and uh, to the games to describe you know all of the players and it was just amazing like he he pretty much you know hit it on a tee with every guy you know just through his ability to, to listen and how they played and and uh, every conversation I had to him I was just you know really amazed at, at what he was able to accomplish with with having a disability like that it was not my line I wish it had been but someone, it might have been Mike Weaver from New York, wrote that, you know, uh, Mr. Gunn had ret retinitis pigmentosa and was all but blind. But he hired the first black coach and black general manager in, um, in the NBA and in any sport, actually. And Mike wrote, he certainly could see clearly to do that. You know, I, working for him was a complete joy. He let us do our job, held us accountable. Uh, he wanted nothing but the best for the city of Cleveland. Number one, he was a great owner. Number two, he's a great friend. One of the things that made him so great, if you told him something, if he had a conversation with you, you could see him two years later, he remembered that. I mean, he knew all our dog's name. And Janie, I couldn't keep up with all. We had so many dogs, I couldn't keep up with the names. But Mr. Gunn would, would sit down and uh, he would go over all the names and ask us about family members and he knew everything and he never forgot that. It's just not many people could do that. You know, he was just an inspiration. He was very much part of the growth of Cleveland and the rebirth of Cleveland in the 80s. And uh, he supported many charitable organizations. And, you know, I think we all should be forever grateful. They put this organization right back on the tracks. They established credibility uh, within the community, not only from a basketball team, but from a business perspective. Uh, they invested a ton of resources and funds in, back into uh, Northeastern Ohio and, and brought pride and dignity and class back to the, the Cavaliers organization. So, you know, that alone is, it says it, it, says it all. And he very, very deserving to be on the wall.